Hey friends, welcome back. Uh, it's another another little, uh, let's call it a tutorial. We'll, we'll, we'll go with tutorial today. Um, I've jumped into career mode uh, by request, and I've more or less mirrored my tech tree to uh, match um, Eti Neo's uh, screenshot there. Uh, I'm sure he's you know, progressed beyond what this shows right now. Um, but this is where, where, where I'm starting, more or less. I just kind of did the old Alt F12 and cheated in a bunch of science there until I had all this filled up, you know. And then I gave myself uh, 200,000 funds. Okay. Um, I actually gave myself a little bit more, got a few things prepared up there in space um, to kind of get things going. Um, it was more or less uh, about a million, I think, is what I spent total um, to get staged and just kept about 200,000 uh, in funds afterwards. So we'll just call that a generous grant from Eti Neo's Research Foundation uh, grant thingy. Um, and there, there's one of those crafts out there. We'll get to that. It's a Beam Alpha 1G. We'll get to that shortly. First thing we're going to do is start our conquest of the entire known multiverse. Um, one step at a time, uh, you might ask, how does one eat an elephant? Well, I'll tell you. One step at a time. So here we have step one. Can you dig it? Because this thing is called dig it. What it does is it digs. It rolls around and it digs. Uh, we're not going to launch this anywhere um, at all. We're going to drive it around the KSC. Uh, its purpose is pretty simple. Uh, make us able to conquer everything. Um, so we've got a couple of universal drills. You guys are uh, familiar with these. These aren't uh, scale. They're normal scale. They require one megawatt of power each. Uh, I've got an ISRU converter unit. Uh, if we go to... Um, let's, uh, oops, click on that. Let me go to... Where's ISRU? It's up here somewhere. I don't know where anything is. I think it's down here. Yeah, it's down here. Of course it is. Okay, if you go there, uh, Universal Drill. It's the green one. It's pretty neat. Uh, it digs things for about one megawatt of power. Okay. Um, so to generate this power, I've got two of these molten salt reactors at 0.625 meters. Uh, you saw we were in the tech tree, so they're not, you know, super powerful, but they're mildly upgraded. Uh, giving us... Uh, Heat-wise, uh, these things will to generate almost 12 megawatts of heat, um, and we'll get you know some percentage of that uh, here through the power. Um, so yeah, you know we'll it'll um, it'll make some some power, but we'll certainly get you know what with our 30 megawatts of, of radiator dissipation, you know overkill because of the converters and the the drills. I just went you know, all out on the radiators. And these are just um, these thermal radiator wraparound things at two and a half meters each. And they are wrapped around. Um, the thing that they're wrapped around is an IFS radioactive fuel container. So we go to fuel tanks and uh, we want radioactive storage. Uh, so it's this guy right here, the six ton, you know, behemoth right there. And it's uh, set up to carry uranium tetrafluoride. 10,000 units of it. Um, 10,000 units of uranium tetrafluoride is about 700,000-ish funds. Okay? So, keep that in mind. 700,000 is a full tank of this. I mean, more. You know, let's, let's, let's hop it on there. We're at 163 right now. We're at like 900,000. Alright? If I did this, you know, it, it would be crazy, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm just going to do the one. Just the one. Okay? So, here's what we do. We got that big giant tank that's inside of here. It's that, that big, big giant fuel tank. 10,000 uranium tetrafluoride. We've got these itty bitty reactors here that are pumping thorium tetrafluoride. You know, 
and they'll do so for a little while, but we're not going to worry about that too much. These bottom tanks here have liquid fluorine. 4,000 units in that one, 4,000 units in that one, so 8,000 units of liquid fluorine. It's actually not enough. We, I, I should put more on here, but whatever. One of these has enriched uranium. One of these has uraninite. So the idea, dig up the uraninite using the drill, store it here, process the uraninite using the processor. Okay, you process the uraninite, and when this launches, there will be a little toggle switch to process the uraninite. Once you've got that, this thing fills up with enriched uranium. You combine your enriched uranium and your liquid fluorine there in your converter, and you convert that through a chemical reaction uh, into UF4, uranium tetrafluoride, okay? which we will then stockpile in this big giant container here in the middle. And then we recover the vessel. Bada bing, bada boom, monies. Okay, so you launch the sucker for 163,000. We got 200,000 to go, right? So this is our budget right here. <laughs> uh, but watch what we do. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and save. Uh, oh yeah, um, way down here just so I don't forget, struts everywhere, and there's like auto strut and rigid attach where I feel it's necessary, but it's not too much because it's not going into space. Get a little probe core um, that is actually facing the wrong direction, but that doesn't actually matter. And we've got a uh, surface scanning module, okay? Um, this is going to be important. I mean, it's not super important, but I mean, it's important. All right, so radiators, trusses, struts, wheels, you know? It's all good, right? All right, let's launch. So, we're out here on the launch pad. It's a... Uh, oh, getting like a frame. There we go. Okay, so... Um, frames per second, not the greatest here. But, anywho. Uh, let's check our readings. We're not doing charged particles. We don't really need that. Thermal power... Alright, so this bad boy, between these two reactors, we got 9.3 megawatts of power. Perfect. Sounds good to me. Oops. Got a little too excited there. Let's try to actually steer this thing. And good enough. Apply the brakes. Alright, and let's run a little... Whoops, wrong button. Surface scanning module. Oh, that's right, I did a scan earlier. So we have 3.81% uraninite in this location. Lucky us. Okay, if you don't start off with uraninite at your KSC, maybe you've got it at um, another launch site. Or maybe you have to launch to another planet. It really depends on how you have your resources um, edited in your game. Um, for me, I'm lucky. It's right here. So here, here we go. Deploy drill. Deploy drill. Looking good. Looking good. Activate. Oop, activate drill. Activate drill. Okay. So, two drills running. We're using two megawatts of power. Got plenty left over. So, let's check to see what's going on. Uraninite's filling up. We'll go ahead and leave that window open. We'll open this one up, put it over here, and then we'll have the tetrafluoride down here in the corner. And that's, that's our finished product right there. Okay. Uh, plenty of liquid fluorine, so we'll go ahead and have that one open right there, right? Cool. Okay. Um, what am I forgetting? Oh yeah, reactor control window. We'll just open up one of these and take a quick peek. Uh, with these two running, we've got enough thorium for 12 years. Put that over here. I guess we're going to 
move these around a little bit. I, I could just leave this open. That would tell us. Okay, yeah, we'll just do that. Well, no, because then it's harder to see. So I'll leave that open. Okay. Uraninite is right here. Uranium tetrafluoride is right here. Enriched uranium is over here. So that tank, that tank, this is right there, this is right there. Okay? Huh? Huh? Alright. And then that's the liquid fluorine. So we go up here first, and right here down at the bottom, start uraninite processing. So we start that, and we got movement over here. It's filling up slowly. Okay? Doesn't go very fast. Um, if you had more of these, or if you had the bigger units, more upgrades, you know. Um, but at our current tech level, that's our rate. You know, that's that's the rate at which we produce enriched uranium. Cool. <clears throat> um, now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to convert this into that. So UF4 right there. You hit that button, and it will start converting. So we got, you know couple kilograms, about three kilograms, it's 0.4, I might get half a unit here in a second, there you go, half a unit of UF4, alright, so it's just going to keep doing that, you know, once, once we run out of fluorine, it's going to just, you know, stock up on all the enriched IU, and then the uraninite will fill up, and then we'll recover the vessel, okay, so we time accelerate, all the time acceleration and I should have uh, let you know if you have epilepsy or something like that definitely don't watch this portion of the video uh, we're going to time accelerate for 72 days or thereabouts like 71 72 days um, but yeah it's just gonna keep going and it's basically gonna go until all the fluorine's gone and then this tank and you know such are full Should get there very shortly. It's gonna run out of fluorine real quick now. It was about 48 days. And it's gonna fill up on this one. Almost done. overshot the mark a little there 76 days um, but we've used up all our fluorine and we filled up on uraninite and your enriched you and we got about 5,590 units of uranium tetrafluoride so 8,000 units of liquid fluorine gave us 5,590 units of UF4 which is 37.4511 tons Um, so, you know, twice as much liquid fluorine, you know, 16,000 units, um, and we'd have a little bit left over once that was done, you know. Um, so yeah, alright, so this, that's that, that took 76 days, you know, so we recover our vessel and reap the spoils, right? This might take a minute. <laughs> Apologies for that, uh, that loading screen right there. Whoops. Oh, okay. And we're back. So we recovered the thing. It was like right next to the launch pad, so you know, pretty much, you know, almost full recovery. Or thereabouts, and it gave us two million six hundred forty-two thousand eight hundred forty-two credits. Uh, it costs, you know, we started with two hundred thousand. We now have, you know, two point six million um, profit. You know, like two point four million plus 
in profit. So yeah, yeah, we're doing okay. So now we can launch some stuff, right? Okay. All right, so that was that. And next thing I'm going to show you, let's see, actually, let's, let's, let's not do that. Let's go straight into the VAB and we'll do some, uh, some starter crafts. This is, you know, going to end up being a longer video. Okay, so this thing right here, beam alpha, is ye olde average infrared beam sickle. <laughs> um, it's got a thorium reactor, right there, right there. Um, reactor mass is 3.47 tons, so you know the 1.875 meter scaling. Uh, nothing super fancy with this one, just you know scaled down a notch. Um, at 1875 for the free electron laser diode or free electron laser you know universal beam producer it's a gyrotron okay it's a gyrotron that also can produce positrons which is super duper awesome except i don't have any positron storage at the moment i need 2500 science and then i can get um you know exotic fuel storage thingies uh, that'll let me store positrons and then this thing will be another money maker device. You know, you can just make positrons, harvest them, bada bing, bada boom. Um, but in the meantime, it's a 50-ish megawatt um, infrared. I've got it tuned for, uh, what is this? Or not this one, but this one for near infrared. Uh, it's got pretty good um, atmospheric penetration there uh, from curve. It's 11% atmosphere absorption. It's pretty decent. Uh, it'll get to, it'll reach the moon, no problem. It'll reach the moon, no problem. Um, doesn't get much to the moon with, with only starting at, you know, about 50 megawatts to begin with. Um, let's see if I can get that up there. Oh yeah, that's, that's not right. 325, yeah, anyway. We'll, 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 we'll show you. We'll show you. Or maybe I actually, maybe this is the bigger one. This actually might be the bigger one. I don't know. Um, I, I did make a much, much bigger one. But anyway, this one doesn't do a whole lot. Um, it's only 69,000 funds, um, so not a big deal, uh, but we're going to launch it anyway, just because. Right, so... A little, little underwhelming on the launch pad. Doesn't look like a whole lot, right? It's it's kind of simple. Um, I went ahead and uh, throttled the reactor down to 94.5%. Um, in, in a lot of cases, I'll do that until my tech level is high enough that I can not worry too much about radiators, but I'm just going to keep it from going to full power uh, if I can. Uh, I still have 248 megawatts uh, to play with, um, so that's great. I'm not going to use it all, but it's there. Um, near infrared spectrum is what we're uh, what we're going with, and we're just going to go ahead and activate the transmitter and watch our power just drop all the way down. And as you can see, we don't we don't have the thermal dissipation to actually transmit that much power. Uh, so we're going to scale it back to about 47% and see if we can get it to stabilize maybe maybe a hundred megawatts is that going to do it for us? no Thinking right about just under a hundred megawatts, ninety nine megawatts. Should be able to hold for a while. It says it could do this for seven years, but it's going to gradually heat up, um, you know, produce actinides, so it's its lifespan is much shorter than seven years. 
in all actuality but in theory it'll keep uh, beaming for quite some time um, not a whole lot of power so 99 megawatts from from here um, but once it gets you know up there you know to the moon it's about 20 maybe maybe 20 megawatts something like that 25 megawatts I don't know we'll see we'll go ahead and do some tests and and we'll see we'll, we'll get some some vessels going and see what kind of power we get okay here we go okay so that's that's beam alpha now beam alpha 1g is a slightly upgraded version you know this beam alpha is 100 megawatts right well, Beam Alpha 1G is a 1 gigawatt, and that's our deployment uh, thing right there. <laughs> um, so it's a little bit bigger. You know, it's got the 3.75 meter reactor and generator and uh, a bunch of radiators. 48 radiators. Still not actually enough to run this thing at full power, but fine <laughs> we're not going to um, near infrared spectrum again it's good for the stage in the game and the idea is to hopefully deploy this into the ocean so that it acts as a sink and keeps the radiators cooler um, we're gonna I, I launched one it's out there in the ocean and it worked out pretty well I thought it was pretty cool but here's the thing um, this piece broke off, so it's not as good as it could have been. Uh, so I'm going to try to remedy that. Let's, uh... Whoops. Go ahead and grandparent strut that one. Grandparent strut that one. Cool. Alright, and we're going to launch this a little bit differently. Gonna launch it. Oops. Hmm. Doesn't seem to want to let me, uh. Hang on a second. Uh oh. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. Okay. <laughs> well, this this might not work, but we'll see. better go back to the to the thing <laughs> okay we'll we'll just go ahead and launch this one from the KSC
Okie dokie. Okay. So, this, this monstrosity... We've already launched one. We're going to try to launch another one. And then have twice the power. Um, and I'll show you why that's important. Alright, so... Here we go. Let's go ahead and reduce down about 2 G's, just under 2 G's of acceleration. It's going to slowly drop down to 1 G, hopefully. And then we're going to start uh, ever so gently tipping to the east. Oop, too much tipping, too much tipping. A little more power so we can right ourselves. Oh, there we go. Well, it'll be off a little bit, but that's okay. Just fly it over this way a little. Okay, cut the engine, and drop that into the ocean. No, no. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Okay, uh, we're probably going to lose this bottom piece just like we lost on that one. This is a bad design because <laughs> that just stuck right on there. I should have put some sort of rocket, you know, some solid rocket booster separation thingies on there. That would have that would have helped. <laughs> oh, well. All right, so let's uh, time accelerate. I don't have any kind of control on this thing, so I can't shake it loose. Oh, there it goes. Oh, and it blew up. Just like I thought it would. Okay. Well, that was a lot of radiator right there. <laughs> um, but that's okay. That's okay. Okay, so Beam Alpha 1G right here. Uh, we're going to try to launch this one a little bit better than this one. Um, this one, uh, the piece right here broke off uh, when I launched it the first time. Oops. <laughs> I'm going to try to get this one out into the water and uh, actually sink this into the bottom to see if we can compare if it makes it, you know, how much of a difference we get. Okay, um, so without further ado, let's do that. Let's do some of this. Get up to about 2 G's, a little less. It's going to start dropping to about 1 G. We're going to start pitching to the side ever so slightly. Ever so slightly, I said. Oh, a little too much. All right. Increase power. Reduce power. Reduce power. Reduce power. There we go. Okay. Pretty good. We're, we're really just shooting for the water. We just want to make sure we land in the water, so... Nothing too... Uh-oh. Rut row. That's not good. Okay, let's try to... Pick her back up. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. Nope. Failure. Yeah, this is this is bad. This is not how this launch was supposed to go. Oh! What do you know? It didn't blow up. Huh. That's pretty cool. We're still falling pretty quickly. Made it into the water, so that's good. Speed things up a little. And hopefully this works. A little fast on the descent. 
Uh, nope, didn't work. <laughs> okay, well, that, that bottom piece was doomed. Doomed, doomed. Uh, more parachutes. Should have done more parachutes. Uh, we did manage to at least sink that into the water. So that should help a little bit. Uh, Alrighty. So let's take a look at the power. Three gigawatts is what it says we have. We only want one. Um, basically, this is the 1G uh, because puts out one gigawatt of power. So six kilometers away, we have a similar model with the similar setup here. Uh, same thing broke off, so they're identical. Um, so two of these bad boys, right? Right? Okay, now we, now we got some power going. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn this on. And activate... what do we got? Not what we want. Laser beams 1.23 gigawatts. Let's reduce that to 1.02 gigawatts. Okay, so one gigawatt of power. It's stable. It's got more than enough. Like it, it's it's just happy. Okay, so we can do that. Um, let's see, that one's left up to 100%. So at 100%, it's working at about 35% capacity. And it can do so for about five years, okay? Using that thorium, it's just gonna beam a, a gigawatt of power out into space, along with that one over there, also beaming a gigawatt of power out into space, and then a couple of the smaller ones that we saw earlier, you know, pumping out about 100 megawatts. Um, in addition to that, um, around the moon, we have a reflector, um, a relay, that is going to, um, you know, relay this around to the backside of the moon, um, Etc. Etc. Could use a few more relays, like one in low curb curb in orbit, so that we can um, better, you know, more efficiently um, distribute that power. But for now, we're just going to do the one relay, and we're going to do a few tests with that from the launch pad out in space, etc. And then we're going to compare that um, with um, similar type vessels that are carrying their reactors with them. Um, like I said, it's going to be a long video. I'll put timestamps in it so that we can, uh, so that you can easily, um, navigate through the different parts. Uh, you know, you can just click on the timestamp and then you'll be good. Okay. Uh, so here, here we got the hot spot is what I like to call this guy right here. Um, it's just a little, a few, few little parts. So let's, uh, let's kind of get this out of the way. You can see our towers back there, beam in power. We have a thermal receiver here, uh, the inline thermal receiver, Mark one. Um, standard size, not scaled for this one. Uh, it's got two connections right now, two satellites, those two right there. It's not turned on right now, so let's go ahead and stage the engine. So that'll activate the engine and the receiver. So now the receiver is receiving power. Um, max power input for this receiver is 755 megawatts. Um, it's collecting a little bit more than that, so it's definitely maxed out, as it were, um, from this angle. Uh, looks like our facing is pretty much spot on, because these are zooming right into the side. These things get better reception from the side. Um, than they do from anywhere else. Um, it's just really, you know, you want to hit this thing on the side. Uh, so that's what we're going to try to do is keep, you know, the, the underside there in line with those guys. Uh, as far as science, because, you know, it's career mode, we got to collect some science, we're going to do some atmosphere analysis and ocean analysis with the gas and liquid chromatograph mass spectrometers. Because um, why not, right? They're from Interstellar. That's some science that we can do right there. And yeah, this probe is super cheap. It's liquid hydrogen in the tanks here, and liquid hydrogen in those tanks for a total of um, 2,595 units of liquid hydrogen. And that's the only fuel. Everything else is thermal power, waste heat, megajoules, and electric charge. So it's just, you know, less than 3,000 units, you know, 2,500, 2,600 units of um, liquid hydrogen. And then the inline receiver. Then we have the. Um, engine down here, it's the toroidal aerospike nozzle, 
and it is going to take uh, the thermal power generated by this guy right here and turn that into thrust. Okay, so let's let's put this right here. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and launch. Let's uh, fire up the engine and launch, and away we go. Might want to do that. Go ahead and point, you know, kind of to the side so we can get over the water. Alright, that should keep us um, in line to make sure that we are going to get a constant amount of power. And we just lost power. So we go ahead and cut that. And from here we're going to just go ahead and deploy the chute. Um, just because. Turn off stability assist. And hopefully this thing makes it to the ground without crashing. So we're going to go ahead and log some atmospheric data and analyze the composition of the atmosphere. I might probably should have put a bigger parachute on this, <laughs> but I guess we'll see. Okay, almost done analyzing the atmosphere. And there we are. All the good stuff. Okay, so we'll just keep that handy. Looks like we're going to touch down around 7 meters per second, so that's perfect. Let's go ahead and time accelerate, time accelerate. Notice that we've uh, dropped off significantly on power um, now from one of our beam generators there, from that one over there. Um, but that one right there, of course, <laughs> that we're landing right next to. And touchdown. Let's go ahead and turn that back on. Well, I guess we don't really need that. Alright, let's do the water. Make sure we keep that. Analyze some ocean composition. So it's mostly water, as expected. A uh, touch of chlorine, sodium, magnesium, sulfur, calcium, potassium, carbonite, lithium, and uranium at three parts per billion. <laughs> um, in case you ever needed to do that. So there we go. We got an idea of what the air and water and around, you know, carbon is, and then we got an idea of what the composition of the the soil there at KSC. Uh, so we know what sorts of resources we can gather right here at home. And with the abundance of materials, it'll make you wonder why we ever bother to leave, but exploration of space um, is the actual reason we're leaving. So all the resources that we learn to harvest here on our home planet, we can then learn to apply that to outer space and, you know, use these bad boys to get us there. All right, so let's um, so that's what we can do in the atmosphere with this. But what does this do out in space? You know, all right. So we're going to go ahead and edit an orbit to get this guy to the moon, and we're going to see how it performs around the moon. You'll be quite impressed. Let's go ahead and recover this though, because we want that science. Okay. So we've edited our orbit to, you know, right around the moon, and same same vessel uh, that we were working with before. Um, only addition this time was an antenna, um, just because we're out by the moon. I wanted to have, you know, secure communications. Build it. Uh, the science package is the exact same. I didn't change it out. I just used the, you know, the same vessel. So we can't actually do any science around the moon. But uh, this vessel was cheated here, so I wouldn't do any science anyway. Uh, this is just for testing purposes. So, uh, what we got here, um, 
this really says we're connected to two beams, uh, beam alphas, um, not the 1G versions, but the smaller versions that only put, you know, this one's transmitting 36.5 megawatts, this one's transmitting 44.2 megawatts. Um, we're getting, you know, 4 and 5 megawatts respectively, so a total of 9 megawatts of thermal um, power is what we're getting, uh, 7.64 actually, because um, efficiency and all that. So we're getting you know, about 7.6 megawatts as opposed to the almost gigawatt we are getting down there at the surface. Um, that might change as we change our facing. Oh, but you know what? I don't have reaction control on this, so I can't actually turn the vessel, so that's embarrassing. Um, but anyway, there is a relay in orbit. We can kind of find that. There we go. I got a relay right here providing communications relay and it's also relaying the infrared power in the event that we you know end up on this side of the planet now our big kahunas the big giant um, transmitters are actually over here by where the Kerbal Space Center is as you can see other side of the planet so I, I, I should have had a relay like this over you know here <laughs> so that it could actually work um, but right now we're using the smaller ones which are at the desert launch site um, and they are providing us with just, you know, just about seven, just a little over seven and a half megawatts of power. So just to show you kind of what that looks like. Um, and since I can't actually turn, we're just going to point radial and just get a thrust reading. All right, so we activate and thrust is 0 0.75. Um, basically, we're not moving at all. Uh, we're just not getting any any power whatsoever. So we're going to try to turn uh, prograde, and that's actually messing our facing up a little. Not, uh, okay, there it goes. It's starting to improve. Um, so it's at least giving us enough thrust to turn. Uh, we're up to 0.6, or I'm sorry, point, yeah, 0 0.6 kilonewtons of thrust. Uh, 0.7, we might get a whole kilonewton here eventually. Uh, 0.8. All right, so enough to turn. Uh, we're barely touching. It's like 1.07 units of hydrogen, you know, per second use, used. It's 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 really not a lot, you know. Um, hardly any thrust whatsoever. We just about and now, uh, right there was uh, one kilonewton of thrust reached. Um, again, that's it you know, just a few megawatts of of actual power, you know. <laughs> Just, just just, barely any power. Alright, so we're going to turn that off. Cool. Alright, so that's how much we get with the teeny tiny little beams. You know, the ones that produce, you know, 100 megawatts, but really only beam out half of that, and then only, you know, a portion of that actually makes it to us, you know. Six or seven percent of its total capacity actually ends up here at the moon. So, not a lot, but six percent ish of you know a couple gigawatts on the other hand that might give us a little more thrust so let's go to map view here real quick we're gonna have to wait for the planet to turn around so this might take a moment all right let's go ahead and speed up time do, 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 do. Oh yeah, this is going to take forever because we're way too close to the moon. You know what I think I'll do? I think I'll make it so that we can orbit a little bit higher. Do that. And I think now I should be able to time accelerate. Yeah, there we go. Oops, I think I went too far. And there, yeah, maybe. So you can get a little more spot on, right, like that. Ooh, now we got three beams connected. Uh, so a lot of power in that network, 
but we're still only getting a small portion of it. But we're still getting a heck of a lot more than we were. So now we're up to 54, almost 55 megawatts that we're getting um, based off of, you know, that sort of thing. And once we, you know, pass around behind the moon, we should still be able to collect, you know, a decent amount and we'll see how much we're getting, you know, just from the relay. And then I'll show you what the relay looks like so you can see what we're dealing with there. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure we're facing prograde. Uh, see, we don't have a very good facing. Um, hmm. Let's just do. Let's do this. Let's do. We'll we'll try to do a, a you know we'll try to fly up. All right. So fire. Now you can see we're starting to get some thrust. And as we increase our facing to a hundred percent, there we go. Well, ninety-seven ish percent. Let's just do that. One of these numbers. Okay, so 99% facing. It's pretty good. We're pulling in 134 megawatts, giving us 13 kilonewtons of thrust, 13.25, and climbing slowly. Give you an idea what that looks like. So this vessel uh, weighs, I think, something like two tons, 2,000 kilograms. Jump to the map here real quick and check. Yeah, two tons. Um, so this is how much it's able to deform its orbit. We'll go ahead and now that we can steer, we're gonna do some of this action. Put ourselves in a polar orbit. If we have enough fuel, let's see where's our liquid hydrogen? There we're there's our liquid hydrogen right there. that and cut power go ahead and do this on this side we get there, but we'll do that when we get there. There we go. Turn around real slowly using just one kilonewton of thrust. Make sure we find our maneuver node. There's our maneuver node. Go ahead and fire that off. Eighty two megawatts of power. The facings, it's like sixty six percent. So we're not getting the most power out of this particular facing, but still not too bad. go. Uh, pay no attention to this over here. This has no idea what's going on. No idea whatsoever. No clue. This is never right <laughs> when we're dealing with this kind of advanced stuff. I still have 900 uh, and 
908 units of liquid hydrogen left. Uh, we just went through a burn that was 150-ish kilonewtons, something like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, and, and still plenty of fuel left over, so yeah, tons of that. And let's see here. Let's see if we can take a look at the map view now. Yeah, there we go. We have a nice little polar orbit. You know, it's kind of not the roundest, but we can easily, easily expand that, make it nice and perfectly circular, no eccentricity. Um, but there's really no point in doing that. Um, yeah. So this is not actually going to take us behind the moon since the moon's, uh, you know, tidally locked. Uh, so it will always have reception from that facing. Um, and I guess the relay is not actually going to do much for us unless maybe we get like over there somewhere or something. Um, but in a nutshell, that's, you know, these things, these thermal receivers, you just, you know, you power them from a distance. Um, and then, you know, your efficiency, you know, scales with technology, distance, what kind of beam you're using, application, that sort of thing. So, you know, if this weren't cheated up here, we could do, like, a lot of science and that sort of thing. Um, more fuel, you know, more efficiency, maybe launch this with a rocket, you could get this up here on its own. Um, and we're going to check out um, some other things. So if you weren't using beamed power, you know, you, you wanted to see how it would uh, fare if you just strapped, you know, the reactor to the probe um, and saw how it did with those, we're going to check those out next. Okay, all right, what we got here is the slow poke. Uh, lift kit's pretty standard lift kit. This is pretty much what I use for just about everything. Um, just burying out the fuel tanks. Uh, its payload is this bad boy. Uh, we got a molten salt reactor. It's got some thorium in there. I put it all the way down um, as far as I could just to save on mass, you know, more thorium, more mass. So I try to make it as light as possible. 50 kilograms, or 50 units not that much. Um, liquid hydrogen in the tanks um, using um, you know the, the, the field ducts there um, to help with the whole crossfeed issue. I do have it uh, obeying crossfeed rules in, in my game so it uh, requires fuel pumps where necessary. Uh, I got some ion engines with some xenon. Uh, I got the toroidal aerospike nozzle there once again, two and a half meters to go along with that. Um, so we're going to kind of combine, you know, the thermal and the electric propulsion here and, you know, see what difference it makes. This is not going to go very far. I put science on there just because, but it's not going to go very far because it's just not enough fuel uh, to do very much, which is why we're launching it with a chemical rocket to begin with. Um, I'll be sure to try to f speed up the launch phase because, again, I'm sure everyone's seen a launch, so I'll just, you know, do a, a super fast launch. Where do I want to launch from? Just gonna launch from the pad. Yeah.
Alrighty. So this guy is going to go ahead and crash into the moon. Um, that that lift port, the remainder of the lift portion there. Um, all other propulsion shall be handled by the uh, the unit itself. Okay. All right. Um, these don't detach, by the way. Uh, when they're empty, they're you know, this thing's just pretty much dead weight. Uh, but that's okay. All right. So first thing we're going to look at, we got 400 and some odd you know megawatts to uh, do stuff with. So without running the aero spike engine, just with the um, xenon. And by the way, this vessel is extremely heavy, so that Xenon is not going to do diddly, diddly anything. Uh, but the vessel itself currently weighs 22.4 metric tons. And we are currently on an intercept course with the moon. If we don't change our orbit, we're going to crash. Uh, so let's go ahead and make a maneuver node that allows us to escape our fate. We're just going to do this, just going to pull it out a little, and then slow down a little, and then that should, there, periapsis of 18,000, perfect, I like it, uh, let's just go and point at that, it's going to require 20.4 meters per second, each of these Dawn electric uh, engines here are going to pump out 0.3 kilonewtons of thrust. 0.3. Um, just to give you an idea, it's going to take us eight minutes of firing that engine uh, to do anything. Or so, you know, the game thinks. Anyway, we're going to get a little closer. Oh, we passed our mark. That's okay. All right, so full power on these guys. 0.329824 kilonewtons each. Um, sucking up 30.5 megawatts of power. Uh, going to those engines. Um, so we're not doing a whole lot. Uh, these are better suited for much, much smaller vessels. <laughs> um, but just to give you an idea, I mean, that's what's going on right now. Uh, let's open up our reactor control window. Gonna put that right there. It's operating at about yeah, 10, 11 percent. Now, if we were to turn on the aero spike engine, it's going to spool up. Um, since we still have plenty of power, oops, that was way too much, way too much. Um, since we still have plenty of power, we can actually run those electric engines no problem. But there's really no point since it's only like a ki 1.2 kilonewtons out of the whole thing. Um, the toroidal aero spike nozzle, on the other hand. As you can see, it uh, really enjoyed being fired. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how much fuel we wasted there. Oh yeah, that's got us uh, 353,000. Um, so that's that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and reverse that. So the aero spike at minimal thrust, 10 kilonewtons full thrust, it'll spool up pretty quick. I'm going to hit 100 before I turn it off. Back down to 145, so let's go ahead and fire that back in. And there we go. Now we're on, once again, an intercept course with the moon. Uh, Pretty cool, huh? We can go ahead and flip back around again. And that should hopefully fix our orbit. There we go. 24 kilometers, 24 and a half kilometers. That's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can get a capture.
Doki. Go ahead and turn off those ion engines. There we go. Uh, and get a little closer to our maneuver. And fire. Okay, so if we watch our uh, spool up here, we should hit about a hundred and a little more, 180, 200, 216, 218, 220, 225, shot by about 13 meters per second. Let's see what that did to our orbit. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> a little, little much, a little much. Let's go ahead and pick that back up. 14, 20, all right, 14 meters per second. Let's do this with the ion engine. Just kidding, the ion engine will take forever. But you can time accelerate with the ion engine. If you didn't know that. going to do that. Alright, so electric propul propulsion definitely should have used like twice as many ion engines, maybe five times as many, <laughs> um, ten times as many, like a hundred of these things, I don't know. Um, but, you know, still gets us uh, to a point where we can do some science. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do some science. Do some gravity. Oh wait, we don't have proper antenna? Is that what's going on? What's going on? Oh, we don't have enough electric charge. That's what's going on. Okay, well, that could have just been fixed with putting um, a battery on there. <laughs> a battery would have been a good idea. Yeah. Anyway, so that's, that's that. We still have tons of fuel left. See, liquid hydrogen, 9,000 units out of the 24,400 we started with. Um, so still quite a bit. We can do a lot more maneuvering with something like this. Um, you can get probes around, and uh, with an actual battery on here, you could transmit data back, or maybe put a parachute on this thing and decouple these and return it to the planet. Who knows? you got all kinds of options. Um, you could use the uh, ion for... You know, light maneuvering near a station or something like that, if this had a docking port. Um, things like that. You know, things like that. Uh, but the uh, big old reactor like this, hooked onto a rocket like that, you got a lot of delta V for a little bit of fuel when you're, you know, already near a low gravity target. Uh, if we take a look here again, gravity around this planet, 1.27 meters per second up here around the uh, moon. Um, at 26 kilometers. So your thrust weight ratio is pretty good. Uh, if we just uh, kind of point prograde and floor it and then check our G's, you know, we, we're getting almost a G 
of acceleration out of this. It's getting quite up there. Looks like just about 1G. Yeah, yeah, just about 1G. Uh, 225-ish um, kilonewtons of thrust uh, using liquid hydrogen. And that, of course, burned through almost all of our hydrogen uh, with that little maneuver, so let's see how far off course that got us. Oh yeah, way off course. So yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, I might use that last little bit to deorbit. I don't know. Yeah, let's go ahead and put her down so we don't have a bunch of space junk. Oh, we might not. Nope. Didn't have enough to, to deorbit. Just let that run forever now. <laughs> um, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Um, gonna try to do some space planey stuff. See if I can get something like that going. Uh, I might use a design much like this, with these being the engines for the space plane. Um, or might do something else, you know. Um, I haven't unlocked turbo jets yet, um, but I'm gonna do some science off screen and get that going. Um, but yeah, uh, next episode we're gonna cover, you know, what we can progress up to from here. Um, definitely throw suggestions at me, questions, anything you need. Let me know. Peace.